Hello, beautiful, wonderful people. My name is Bonnie Northgraves, and this is another episode of Jay's Story Time. You might notice Pepper is absent from this episode, and it's not because he's mysteriously been captured by a phantom menace. No, um, he has been singing just a little bit louder than I have, so he needed a little bit of a musical break in the bedroom. And he can come back when he's nice and quiet again. Um, <laughs> or when I'm done singing. Then it can be his turn again. Um, no, that's enough about Pepper. Let's talk about music. So uh, today we're going to be featuring a song from 1930. This is by George and Ira Gershwin. Um, the song's called But Not For Me. It's for you. So let's jump into it. Zuba do piano okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to play in the key of G major. Oh, yeah, and one more cool thing about this song is that it doesn't start on the one chord. It starts on the two chord, which fits our trend of songs that don't start on one. Um, <laughs> so this was written in 1930 for a musical called Girl Crazy. Now this is important to note because in this first rendition of the musical, this song was sung by Ginger Rogers and this is actually the musical and the song that launched her off into stardom. So she had a great film and dance and entertaining career. Um, this was the beginning of it or at least the thing that accelerated her. Um, in 1934, um, they made a film version of this musical. Actually, they made one in 1966. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head because it has a different title. Um, but the 1934 film uh, featured Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. So you can also check that out if you are feeling so inclined. Um, one more thing to note about the 1930 version, the stage musical version, um, was that not only was there incredible talent on stage and behind the musical, like the writing, the composing, the um, choreography, but also the band that played behind everything was just like totally stacked. So uh, some of the musicians featured in it were like Benny Goodman, Glenn Miller, uh, Red Nichols, Jimmy Dorsey, Jack T. Garden, Gene Krupa. Like it was super stacked. Um, so I don't even know, like, can you imagine like being somebody on stage and having like that many super famous, talented people backing you up? Pretty cool. Um, yeah. In 1939, the first audio recording of this song was done. I'm not sure why there was a nine year lull between when it first was released or published um, and then the first recording. Um, if anybody knows, they can tell me all about that or maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I could find that the first recording didn't happen until 1939. Um, yeah, one other note about this song before I get too rambly and too long. Um, I first heard this on the 1954 Chet Baker Sings album. Um, I've talked about this a fair few times, but I believe that album was super influential to my music career, I guess you could say. Um, I still remember checking it out from the university uh, library, Capilano University, um, and like putting it on and feeling like they were like pouring liquid silk inspiration into my soul through my ears. It was amazing. Um, so yeah, lots of fond memories attached to this song. So on that note, I'm going to sing it out for you. They're writing songs of love, but not for me. A lucky star's above, but not for me. Love to lead the way I 
found more clouds of gray than any Russian play can guarantee. I was a fool to fall and get that way. Hi ho, alas, and so lack the day. Although I can't resist the memory of his kiss, I guess he's not for me. All right, there's the tune. My name's Bonnie. Pepper is not here today, but he will be back. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye!